Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and this will be a review on the new Hot Toys Batman vs Superman 1 6 scale Wonder Woman figure. She is finally out and she's finally here. The Trinity is now complete. We have Superman, Wonder Woman and Batman standing together on the shelf and it does look very impressive. This Wonder Woman figure is a bit of a controversial one. I mean, me myself, I don't even honestly feel ready to review this. I got it yesterday and... I don't know what to tell you really, <laughs> I don't know, it's, it's a scary one to handle. Her body is a new, a whole new body from Hot Toys. They've never done anything like this before that I know of. They've done the uh, Leonidas, I think, from 300 a good while ago, and that was kind of seamless, and the Dutch from Predator, Arnold Schwarzenegger's character. Um, but this female body is all new for them. It reminds me of fire scene bodies, I have a few of those. It's nice and heavy. The body has a good bit of weight to it. There is um, a seam that you can see going down her arm. It also is on her leg as well. You can't really see it so much there, but it is there. I'll show you later on. She, um, Her skin is looking very shiny at the moment, but that is because it's now nighttime and we're going strictly from the light in the room. And there is uh, two lights, very bright, pointed right at her right now. So she will look a bit shiny. Um, there is a shine to the skin, but the way you're seeing it right now is being slightly exaggerated by that bright light pointing right at her. But the skin itself, I mean, you can see there's kind of like markings and not scratches, but because I haven't even touched that section of her. I've barely touched this figure since I've got her, to be honest, because I'm constantly nervous to do it. Um, there's been some posts on Facebook of people who have had her in the defensive pose where her arms are raised and crossed. And uh, he left it like that for 10 minutes, apparently. He sent me a message and showed me pictures. And um, I think it was a guy from Hong Kong. I haven't actually gone and double-checked that. But he did send me a message and he did say, be very careful because if you do put her in that pose, make sure it's only for a couple of seconds. Take your pictures, shoot your bit of footage, and then get it out of that pose because uh, you're getting some serious creases and wrinkles when you put the arms back to normal, uh, just there by her shoulder or near the armpit. The uh, suit design itself, we'll talk about that more in depth in a moment. The likeness, the hair, how hard it is to uh, put the shield and the sword on the back. Not that it is that hard, but just let you know, uh, I'll cover that in a minute and tell you how you know how much of a headache or non-headache that is to do. But the likeness, the thing about the uh, the hair situation is a lot of people would have preferred sculpted hair, but because of the length of her hair... I don't know how they would have done that because she wouldn't be able to move her head because the sculpted hair would have come down just over her shoulder here and at the back and it would have molded, you know, been molded to fit in that position. And then she wouldn't really be able to move. They'd have to give you a second head sculpt with hair kind of blowing in the wind or something as a second option. I just don't know how they would have done sculpted hair for hair this length and still make it, you know, poseable. But I don't know. I would like to see uh, if they did make a solo version Wonder Woman figure after this to give that one sculpted hair just so we can see is that the way to go with her you know I'm up for one version with rooted hair and one version with sculpted hair I'm well up for that I just you know I don't hate this rooted hair it is a bit of a weird one um, it really does make or break the likeness depending on where the hair is falling and the lighting the way it's hit in the face like right now it doesn't look too bad but it's not dead on Gal Gadot I mean the closer you get, as I've said in previous videos, like about there, it really does start to look like her. But the further you get away, I do start to see a little bit of, and don't laugh when I say this, I've already seen someone else say it, but I do agree, especially when I was out, uh, outdoors filming the True Light review in the daylight, she looked a bit like Lady Gaga at times. And then, uh, who else? She even looked a little bit like Terry Hatcher at one point from the Dean Kane Superman series. And then I saw... Um, Phoebe Cates as well because of the teeth showing uh, I know you're not seeing Phoebe Cates now and you probably don't even know who she is because you're too young but um, she was she was very significant in my childhood anyway so let's get into it Wonder Woman let's go deep let's go ahead and take a look at her accessories mostly hands and weapons and you do get the gauntlets here for the defensive pose where it looks like they're kind of lighting up and uh, you can see the scratch marks in between from Harley's heels from the, the time I reviewed her. Hey Harley, how you doing? She is awesome. I've got to say straight off the bat, I'll save you the trouble watching the whole video. If you have to choose between Harley and Wonder Woman, get Harley. She is a solid, almost 10 out of 10. 
I mean, I will, I'd, I'd give her a 10 out of 10, but the knee situation, I'm totally okay with the knees. I shouldn't be talking about Harley, it's Wonder Woman's video, but if you have to choose, there's no contest, she's a winner. And uh, Wonder Woman is, she's, I, I want to say great, because you look at this and you do think, yeah, that is a great looking figure, but it's, it's just, there's all these little things that stop it from being a great figure, but... Ugh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll go deep. Don't worry. I'll tell you all about it. But um, yeah, there's the gauntlets paint job on closer inspections. A bit weird. It just looks like someone's got some curry sauce and just plastered it on those. Uh, so there you go. Here's her hands. You've got two relaxed hands. Paintwork on them is nice. Again, uh, no real dis definition or distinction between the fingernail and the finger. Just the sculpt to let you see there is a fingernail there. Um, little details like that make all the difference, but they really haven't. I mean, that thumb there looks more like a male thumb to me. But <laughs> we're getting really nitpicky now, but we're going deep. I'm, I'm telling you how it is. Uh, yeah, so there you've got some more hands there for holding stuff, a sword, and I guess the whip and whatnot. And she has her two fists on to keep her looking nice and tough. And obviously you've got your uh, lasso of truth, which I won't be unraveling. Well, I'm, I could do. It wouldn't be hard to put it back like that again. Uh, it's got one of those little clasps to hold it in place with the tiny little uh, doohickey. Let's just zoom in there. That's a bit of a B-I-T-C-H to uh, get in there, but, you know, it's doable. Hasn't given me too much grief. The strap is not really an accessory, but it does hold her accessories. Uh, she comes with that sort of arm band Wonder Woman sort of logo there. And I'll just put a pause in and turn around so you can see the shield and the sword. All right, now she's turned around. The shield is upside down, I believe. Like, I think that's meant to be... What is that picture? I know it's upside down right now, but what is it? A kind of hawk or something? Like a bird? Kind of just there in the middle. It's very subtle. Maybe it's meant to look like it's worn. But yeah, I do apologize for the fact that it's upside down. I didn't realize that when I was trying it out yesterday. I just wanted to see if I could get the shield and the sword on the back easily. It wasn't too hard to do. Um, you just got to think about it and pay attention. I just remembered something I saw from the guys in Hong Kong who reviewed this day one. And uh, look at the, uh, what do you call that, text? Just for the sake of appearing less foolish, I'm just going to call it text. But yeah, very nicely done on the shield. Really nice work. Very nice, very nice. Alright, so that's um, how I've done the sword and shield displayed on the back setup and it's kind of hard to explain it's kind of easier to just try yourself and just be careful the strap itself is nice and tough and sort of thick fake leather or whatever it is and the um, the straps on the shield are kind of like a plastic the sword is plastic the shield is plastic everything is plastic really accessory wise um so if you can study that from this angle when you get her you should be able to get that in that setup pretty easily Hopefully, rather than me try and explain what that is there, I thought I'd just show it to you and you can copy it. Because, um, I mean, I need to have a bit more of a go. Obviously, I need to do it again and put the shield the right way up. Um, but yeah, it's definitely doable. It's not that hard to do. And it is a cool look. A way to utilize everything, but have her look very focused and simple. Um, I mean, she looks so sort of strong. I've got the torch shining right in her face, so it's making the hair kind of look very Barbie doll right now. And I've seen people say it's the most Barbie looking figure uh, Hot Toys have done. Um, I mean, I just, it does look a bit kind of that way right now. It seems like the more light you have shining in her face and just in her direction in general, it just tends to not help the look of the figure. Not that you want it to be in the shadows or anything, but I don't know. When you pull back and you see the whole frame, it doesn't look anything like a Barbie doll. But just when I was... Uh, turning around for the first time then and I saw how shiny the hair looked with the torch shining in her face it just kind of hit me I was like yeah I kind of see what people mean um yeah I've never been this I do apologize guys I've never been this unsure of what to say in a review and that's not a good thing I mean usually you know I mean Superman that's a solid piece right there I mean it's not perfect but it's damn good some really uh, clever things they've done there to make the suit look more kind of metallic, like the silver body underneath to give it that kind of metallic look. Really impressive, and they really nailed that cape this time. 
and uh, the armored batman is you know not poseable he's pretty damn limited you can move him a bit but not much but it just doesn't matter because that is a shrunk down armored batman from the movie all the way the detail on that suit just how real it looks the fact that they gave you those kind of eyes that look like they're lit up even though they're not i, I wish they do that with more figures that do have light up eyes Especially like the Terminator stuff. I've done a recent video where I had to put little bits of blue tack over his eyes and paint them red. That's what that is right there. Because I just didn't like the way he looked without the eyes on. It loses so much presence when the eyes are off. So I'm glad that they've uh, done that with Armored Batman. There's regular suit Batman in the background. He would have been in the lineup here, but I can't get to his box right now. And I didn't want to put the regular Batman in front of an armored box. Because then I'll just get unundated with... Uh, comment saying why have you got the wrong box behind the figure i've taken the sword and the shield off just so you can check out the back i love the way her shoulders look and the back uh, muscles they look very realistic kind of tried to brush the hair away to the side there so you can really see it so the strap goes on there's like a little button on the end of this bit that connects to this bit and joins it together it's a, one of those really, really small, fragile buttons, so I knew I had to be super careful when I was first putting that on. You won't want to be taking the strap on and off all the time. Uh, people were mentioning something about um, will the gold wear away or something like that, because apparently when you put paint on the very end of clothing, it can start to wear away. Um, I'm not sure about that. We'll see how it goes over time, but this is very, very thin. It's, it's a material, but it's, it feels kind of papery. But, um, you know, I'm sure they, they had their reasons for choosing that kind of material. And here is her, well, boots, would you call them? I'm not sure, they're very gladiator-esque. Get a look at the uh, paint job on them. Hopefully she's going to stand up for me. There we go. Don't fall over. Yeah, I love the, uh, the paint job on this section. That's really, really nice looking. You can see the ankle joint. But when you sort of just move the armor down... I mean, it kind of conceals it. I mean, I've never noticed them when I've just been looking at her on the shelf, even when she's like to the side. Haven't really noticed that joint. But yeah, posability hasn't been hindered by these. You can still move her ankle. You need to kind of just hold one uh, hand on the sort of top bit and then the other hand down here, moving the ankle slowly. And you can get it to pivot really well to keep her balanced without the stand for a pose. But yeah, really nice paintwork on these. Zoom in for you. Very nicely done. You can see that seam I was telling you about on her leg. It's uh, subtle depending on how the light's hitting it, but you can see it now. See all the seam? Wish they had figured out a way to avoid that. But I think even the fire scene bodies have the little seam like that. Could be wrong. Whatever happened to the company, I think they were called Edation. That was the first female one six scale seamless body I ever got, and it was more kind of pink in skin tone. Um, but that was called Edation Hot Stuff, that body. And then I discovered Fire Scene, uh, or Fire Scene, depending on you know, how you say it. But yeah, now Hot Toys have done this seamless body, and it's just terrifying to go near this thing because it was so expensive. And um, the horror stories I'm hearing pop up, I just, I'm really hesitant to get too hands on with her, but obviously I'm going to. Uh, we're a fair bit into the review now, and I haven't really posed her, but trust me, it's coming. I just uh, building up to it. That's all. But yeah, the um, the outfit, a good look at that. I really love the uh, the vibrancy of the color. Like I said in the unboxing, it is a bit more reminiscent of how her outfit looked in the Solo movie that came out recently, rather than her appearance in Batman vs Superman. Again, that could all just be down to the color grading or whatever they do in these movies to make the color seem a certain way. Very green sometimes, very blue other times. Made me think as well, because like, all these Zack Snyder films and the Marvel movies and when they do this color grading stuff they can just do that on a computer but back when like James Cameron was filming Terminator 2 and anyone who loves Terminator 2 knows the color kind of scheme of that movie is very much blue he had to put up lights for every single shot and get the film to look that way physically rather than just going into a computer and just making everything green and saturated so you've got to appreciate the old days of film man but anyway yeah, I do love the way the outfit is done. People are asking, is the outfit um, hindering the movement? Not so much, but it definitely would here. Um, it is a kind of plastic. This is quite tough feeling, very hard. It feels very hard. I can't even get any give on that when I'm pressing on a stomach. Um, 
As far as is it easier to take off, I don't know. I won't be trying that. I will maybe pop a head off and put it on a fire scene body. The closest skin tone I think I have would be the Vampirella, and that's nowhere near close, but I can't use the Catwoman bodies for her because they're pale as pale. All right, I'm going to go ahead and show you the instruction manual. It's up to you to pause this, and you can read the text. I'm not going to be hovering on any one bit for too long. It's up to you to pause that and have a look for yourself. There is quite a lot in this manual to take in, and I'm pretty sure it's all important stuff. So just make sure you do check out the manual when you get the figure in hand. Make sure you read up and you're aware of the do's and don'ts. And uh, the don'ts are very strong with this one. So let's just let you see all this. There's some info about how to move the head. You really want to be careful with the uh, skin on her body. I think it would be pretty easy to get some damage on that if you weren't too careful. So yeah, very important. Make sure you are checking out this manual. And that's the end. I got through it all. And just let you read that. Pause it, have a look. Alright, one of the things you guys requested to see, or know, on this review was um, will the head go on a fire scene body and how does it look? Uh, as I might have mentioned earlier, the only body I have by fire scene that would... It's, look, I mean, it's night and day. She's pale. That's not pale, so... Um, but just for a connection uh, point of things, uh, I don't think this is going to work because the ball joint on the fire scene body is a lot smaller. And yeah, it just goes on there, it's really loose. It doesn't click in place and she has no neck. So that doesn't really work. Okay, so I hope that answers that. But mind you, there's so many different fire scene bodies now and maybe even different companies who different um, who make different bodies. The head goes on really easy and comes off. See, that's on again now. I didn't even have to use two hands. Now, the way the legs join to the body is the same as Harley Quinn. Those big joints in there uh, allows for kind of box splits-ish kind of posing. Uh, we'll see how much the legs move forward, but I'll just show you that setup and how that actually looks. All right, it's time to get down to business. I am going to put her in this defensive crossed arms pose. I'm not going to leave her like that for long, about a minute top. So I'm going to have to get her in that pose, start filming, show you it, and then get her the hell out of that pose. Because as I mentioned, someone has had a major issue with uh, creasing in the arms once they try to put her back to normal again after being in the cross arms defensive pose. So I'm going to do it and we'll see how it goes. Right, nope, that's not going to happen. Sorry about that, guys, but I'm afraid I ain't risking it with this thing. Um, you can feel once it gets to a certain point when you're trying to get the arms to um, get in position. I don't like the way it feels when you get to a certain point with the elbow. I just think that could snap and I'd be friggin' heartbroken. Um, plus, you really got to bring this shoulder and move this arm a lot further than I have right now to get her in that defensive position. And it's already, like, when I put her arm back straight again you see that line in the inside of her uh, arm there that sort of line that happens i'll get the damn camera to focus but you can imagine that would happen way worse up here and you'd really see that uh, but you can see the line i'm talking about see it right there that's happened just from literally bending the arm it might sort of go back to normal after a while and it doesn't look too bad there because it is you know it is the inside of her arm but yeah, I'm not risking it. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry to let you down on that one, but I would be absolutely gutted. As amusing as it would be for some of you guys out there for me to break this thing <laughs> and get it all in the review, I ain't doing it. I'm not that posed. I'll see what else I can come up with, but I ain't ever going to be trying to put her in that one. It's a damn shame she should be able to do that. Um, but because it's a seamless body and it's the new Hot Toys one, I'm not risking it. We've seen that she can do it. The bloggers put out the pictures of her in the cross-arm defensive position. Um, but I can't do it, man. It's just going to lead to tragedy. Honestly, I wouldn't lie to you. It just doesn't feel safe to do with this figure. Not because it's so expensive. You know, I had to pay a fortune. Oh, by the way, um, I haven't given a shout out to James Irwin yet. And we're way into the video, probably about 25 minutes in. But James Irwin uh, helped me get hold of one of these. He had to pull some strings and work pretty hard to track me one down. Because he only released 100 at first. Uh, so thanks very much, James, uh, for helping me get one. Sorry I forgot to mention you in the unboxing, man, but I'd been up for like 23 hours or something. I was exhausted. So, um, yeah, thanks very much, James Irwin, on Facebook.
All right, so I used the scene as a reference. I uh, had it on the TV there. It's just on YouTube where she swats away the mortar fire or the mortar shell. Um, and I've tried to just replicate that pose as good as I can with her. Uh, I would never leave her like this because you really got to fight against the figure to stop it from looking Barbie-ish uh, because of the hair. It's, it's not the fact that it's rooted hair, it's the kind of hair they've used. Um, I'm sure there's all different kinds, but it's so damn frizzy looking, it's just not how it was in the film. Um, that would be a separate video, I'd have to try and use something in her hair to try and make it less uh, frizzy looking. But I have tried, you know, kind of wetting my fingertips and twisting it a little bit. Um, trying to get it to just chill out a little bit but you, know, you can see what it does really frizzy look at that it's not helping the situation but anyway there's that pose once again that's how it looks there I mean her hair is in action on the TV there it's all sort of moving in motion but you can't really get that with this all right so obviously with this one I was going for the scene no man's land Again, try to copy this. Now you have to bear in mind, I do see the difference in posture, but you've got to bear in mind her armor won't really let me get her there, and the hair is a bitch to work with, and it's not helping, as I said before. It's just not helping the poses that I'm trying to do. It's kind of killing each one. Uh, so she just still looks very Barbie-ish, and it's the damn hair that's doing it. And even though the body is pretty damn poseable, I'm going to hurry up and get that arm out of that position because I don't trust it. That, you know, the marks and the sort of wrinkles in the body don't want that to happen, so I'm just going to change that. And this one too. Sorry guys, but it's expensive, man. I just, I don't want to break it. But yeah, that was just to show you the uh, pose from that scene. As close as I can get it without breaking the damn thing. I'm sure you can do it, but I don't know. The bloggers, I don't think they're paying for those figures. I think they get those for free nice and early so they can take their pictures. Uh, the blogs in Hong Kong. So I don't, you know, when you get stuff for free as a sample, you can go nuts with it because you didn't, you're not going to lose out on any money. Well, I'm going to feel like an idiot if I'm doing it wrong, but I guess, see, there's a strap there, and you've got this little side thing, and I saw that and thought, what's that for? And then I checked back on the movie, well, her solo movie, and uh, there was a scene where she's got her sword down by her side in here, but that hole ain't big enough for this sword and um it won't go in all the way i get it in about that much and then it's just too big to go through there so um i'll have to double check and check like the blogger pictures and see if that actually does go through there but it's certainly not going in any more than that without me just completely fragging the paint job on the sword because it's really tight and uh, very awkward to talk about all this talk of whole uh, holes and swords that are too big for holes and stuff Mm. See, now that sucks. I wish I had been filming at the time when it happened, but I was just uh, getting ready. I wanted, I had the idea of like to have a kind of standing to the side of her arm all the way stretched out. Like when you pose Harley Quinn pointing the gun at you, looking down the barrel of the gun. Uh, I was kind of going to get Wonder Woman to look down her arm with the sword pointing right at us. And when I moved, so you can see the line, I went to move her arm upwards. Let me just go ahead and do it again. Um, but there's a line, let me just see, that's appeared now, that wasn't there before, and you can barely see it for some reason now, but it is there, it's right going down here, and that little crease happened when I moved her arm, so you've got to be so careful with this thing, it's ridiculous, they, this is such a, it feels like more of an experiment than a fun, like a final piece, you know, it's going to be the next Wonder Woman, not the Themyscira training version, we know that's going to be pretty cool, but the body could be the same exact body, so... I don't know, it's going to be a nicer head sculpt, but the fair mascara version, I hope they go back and fix this body. Because it doesn't feel right at all, and it is affecting the figure when I put her in certain poses and when I try to move her arm uh, to a certain limit. Mind you, the instruction book did say be careful and don't do this and don't do that. Maybe I'm uh, trying to push her beyond her limits, but I just keep thinking back to those blogger pictures that we all saw and thinking, oh wow, she can do that, she can do this, she can do that, she can do this, but... Each one of those pictures from the bloggers should come with a big bloody warning on the picture saying, by the way, don't try and do any of these because you're going to end up wasting X, X, X amount of money. You know, it's going to be museum pose all around, all across the board. Everyone's going to have their Wonder Woman, just maybe the head will be looking to one side or maybe the arm will be slightly raised a little bit. Maybe a little bit of a change in the elbow, but she's basically going to be museum pose 
universal. Yeah, can't even really pose this thing without damaging your figure. Luckily, so far, I haven't managed to um, damage her anything other than like very superficial little wrinkles in her skin now and stuff. But you have to get really up close to see them. And, um, you know, I kind of knew that it, this was a big experiment going into it and it was a risk. But I still love the way it looks when you get it in a decent pose. It ain't in a decent pose right now. I was just in the middle of trying to pose her and get her to lift her arm up. And I saw that crease appear. And I was like, well, screw that. I can't even do her looking down her arm pointing the sword at us and that was just a basic pose I was going to do a couple of pictures a bit of photography splice it in in amongst the review here but now you've got to kind of like where everything is at the moment that's kind of your limit you can raise the arms up about that much and then tweak things a bit but you've really got to be creative within this zone of movement so yeah frustrating all right, let's try and have some fun with this thing. Lord knows I paid enough for it. Got to get something out of this experience. So let's do some height comparisons. And here's Harley Quinn, a figure that outmatches Wonder Woman, the one six scale figure by Hot Toys in almost every way. She is almost damn perfect. Incredible likeness, undeniable dead on Margot Robbie from Suicide Squad, an amazing piece. Check out all my videos on her. Ended up busting out about 11 videos on Harley Quinn, including the review, the unboxing, the True Light review, the showcase review, the modification on the belt, um, other stuff. But there she is standing beside Wonder Woman and uh, they're both off the base standing pretty much straight up. I didn't want to change my Harley Quinn pose because that's the way I want to leave her for a while. But as far as how accurate that is, I really couldn't tell you. They're both kind of wearing, well, obviously Harley's got the heels on the boots and the gladiator kind of boots that Wonder Woman has have a bit of a heel to them as well not quite as much as Harley uh, but then again Gal Gadot was a model I think uh, Rob, Margot Robbie was as well uh, all I know is that she used to be on Neighbours apparently um, but yeah there you go I mean they really did do a good job as far as the proportions of Gal Gadot you know the ex-model uh, ex-military um, what was it weapons trainer or something like that she was in the military for a while it was a pretty interesting past and uh, really impressed me as Wonder Woman in a solo film. I thought she was fine in Batman vs Superman. It didn't blow my mind or anything. But the uh, actual solo film Wonder Woman that came out this year was excellent. And I thought she did a really, really good job. And, you know, best of luck to her. And well done, Gal Gadot. And well done on having your own Hot Toys figure. It's just a damn shame that it's fraught with issues and bloody stressful bullshit. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, there's your uh, height comparison between Hot Toys, Harley Quinn, and Wonder Woman. Alright, and here's Deadpool. Always got to have a little Deadpool action in the video, even if it's just a cheeky little cameo. He always manages to squeeze his way in somewhere. But uh, again, couldn't tell you how accurate that is. It's up to you guys, I'm just showing you. Some of you guys out there know a hell of a lot more than me when it comes to stuff you know in general but yeah there's the two of those side by side moving on and now the legendary christopher reeve r.i.p the superman of my childhood standing beside wonder woman looking okay you can see a good example of how you know at the time and still is a fantastic head sculpt by hot toys very very accurate likeness could be better now uh, given what they're capable of clearly with uh, Margot Robbie's likeness and stuff like that. Um, but paint detail, uh, texture of skin, that kind of thing has come a fair bit and moved forward since then. God, I don't like those teeth. Just not a fan. I think, um, let's just cover that up. See there, that looks great. That looks like her, right? And that looks like her too, as well. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. It's weird. One minute you think it does, and then you look at it and you're not sure again. Very bloody strange. But anyway, um, yeah, there's Superman. Christopher Reeve. Didn't want to change his pose, so I just left him like that. And the Heath Ledger Joker from The Dark Knight, the Hot Toys DX11 figure. There's your height comparison between those two. Still a masterful piece. The uh, absolute awesome performance by Heath. Incredible. The only thing about the uh, DX11 that still bothers me a little bit is his coat. It is very nice, but it's just a bit weird looking. I mean, look at it, it's kind of really fuzzy. 
and uh, I've managed to get it falling quite nice here but usually it looks like a bathrobe just kind of puffing out way too thick uh, even though the material was actually quite thin but it is lovely inside with the orange but there's a really detailed review <laughs> yeah there's a really detailed review on this Heath Ledger Joker figure on the channel that I actually did not too long ago kind of revisited a classic figure and did a big long half hour review with this guy a nice little stop motion intro you go ahead and you check that out and Darth Vader and Wonder Woman just for the sake of it just so you can see he was to hand so I grabbed him and threw him on up here on the shelf so we'd go ahead and get a look at him he's considerably taller and uh, considerably more badass and worth the money so there he is and standing beside my Hot Toys Maleficent figure and that head has been repainted by Laboratory Effects in Spain. Video coming up on that soon with much more detailed look at the awesome job he did on the Maleficent head. And I also have, uh, for reasons I will explain later, I still have a stock head so I can actually do a nice comparison between the two of those for you. So let me just go ahead and pop that down there and just let you get a look. Oh, by the way, I'm rocking the spare Vampirella fire scene hands with Maleficent because her hands are cool. She's got some really cool nails. Her nails are kind of like a very mild pink whitish color on top and then underneath they're red. But the fire scene has much longer, more kind of creepy witch-like nails. And I wanted to use them with old Mally here. And she looks pretty sweet. She also looks a bit pregnant because of the damn dress which I might have to get in touch with Gwyneth who may be a cat woman Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> look at your ass you stupid mother oh man no she's okay she, her leg her ankles look a little bit funky nothing's broken she look at the state of her yeah she's fine she just took herself she's Wonder Woman she can deal with it can't you yeah uh, Mal's alright, she's just lying back, <laughs> she's taking a rest after oh, all that fun. Anyway, there's your goddamn height comparison between Maleficent and Wonder Woman. Alright, there's Elder Predator beside Wonder Woman from Predator 2. Wonderful Hot Toys figure, almost goddamn perfect. In fact, I'd, you know, go ahead and give it a 10 out of 10, even though he's a bit stiff in the joints department and can't really do much pose-wise. But you can't mess with the uh, re-sculpt that they went with, they really did go back, they were going to give us some BS. Then they went back and uh, paid attention to what the people were saying from the prototype pictures and they actually uh, fixed that head sculpt and made it a lot more accurate and started from scratch I believe. Uh, but yeah, nice dreads, they seem to be holding up well. And um, yeah, nice bread, very very high on the list. Now, there he is beside Wonder Woman, just so you can see. Again, not sure how accurate that is, but I'm pretty sure, I mean that was Kevin Peter Hall possibly in this suit. Uh, obviously he was the predator in the suit for the city hunter in part two um but whether he was actually in the elder predator suit which was a uh, uh, long story i was going to start going into the whole backstory on that and how it used to be the original predator and blah blah blah, blah. that's another video that's probably on the channel already but yeah as far as uh, kevin peter hall he was a big dude and i know gal gadot's pretty tall as well so who knows but that's what it looks like soak it up take it in now with the articulation, I will do, uh, probably will do, even though it's very risky and scary to do with this thing, uh, I probably will do a separate articulation demo. I would do it in this video, but I need both hands free and I have not set up um, the makeshift tripod that I have to make out of book stands and boxes on top of that and all kinds of crazy silliness in order to prop this phone up into a position where I can use both hands and reach around the camera and do a proper demonstration of, our, of her articulation. But the uh, skin on her thighs looks really good down here, but you see more marks? See just there, right there? See that line? Don't know where that came from, that's not from me, that was like it when I, uh, when I got that one. Um, and there's some more, there's like one up here as well, some little, looks like a scar or something, but yeah. Now in this section of the video I'm going to mess with the hair a little bit and try some different looks to see how the likeness holds up with the variations in sort of hair position. So we'll start with this, just hair down the back 
Uh, I haven't combed it or anything like that and I haven't washed it or done any of uh, the other little suggestions that you can sort of take on board in order to calm the hair down a little bit and you do see the odd hair uh, here and there just kind of sticking out and being a little unruly but yeah let me just go ahead and get that down there so let me zoom in um does it look more like algodot if you make the hair kind of appear like more kind of tight to the head and wet like that um doesn't seem to make much of a difference and then you let go of it and kind of puffs out again a bit more naturally that looks pretty decent i mean the likeness is there definitely it's just not 100 percent dead on let's have a look different angles there's those teeth no real uh, paint definition there as far as uh, a separation between those two main front teeth there's no sort of black line between them so it looks like one big bunny tooth um so there you go looking at it from above coming down from above looking at it let's see how it looks there it is yeah. looks pretty good looks pretty good come around the side that looks pretty good and the other side again the uh, torch shining right in her face here if i don't use the torch it might be a bit dark because i'm shooting this at night you can always refer back to the true light review that i shot outdoors yesterday if you want to see her in the daylight the total natural light experience all right let's try moving the hair around a little bit some people said they wanted to see it kind of pushed to the side let's see how that works out I've pushed the hair to the side. It doesn't look too bad. Kind of like that. I just moved the legs a little bit to make it look like she's walking forward. And uh, also just to get a nice little backlit effect. I'll just pop the cheeky little light up there. And uh, just got it shining behind her. Just to kind of give a nice lit kind of uh, silhouette around the edge of her hair. And it's kind of bouncing back into her face from the camera I'm holding. That looks really cool. But yeah, there's the hair to the side, doesn't look too bad. I kind of like the way that looks, I might actually rock her like that. Maybe, we'll see. Still need to do something about the ends of this hair. Kind of reminds me of the Scarlet Witch head sculpt, as far as the hair design or material, whatever the hell they've used. But that looks pretty nice, look at that. Regardless of the likeness right at this moment, just as a thing, that you know, a complete thing that I'm looking at, that looks very impressive. Very nice. Now when the hair is back over her shoulders and you're hiding all those ends of the hair, you can kind of spread it out like this. Try to spread it out a bit more, not just have it, you know, like, um, like that, which is one way of having it. I just take it and kind of use my thumb and my fingers just to kind of spread it out a little bit more, get it to spread across the back. I don't usually like to see any background through the hair like you'll see on my finger there i don't usually like that but with her because of the way i've seen her hair in the films uh i know that that would probably happen so it doesn't bother me so much but the likeness is very much affected i think by the position of the hair so you just spread it out a little bit i kind of like that too looks nice let me just go ahead and take away this effect it is nice but i don't want to uh distract it too much let me go ahead and shine that right now mush See how the ends just don't look very nice. But yeah, I mean the likeness is definitely there. I mean people are saying the likeness is not there and it, it's just totally not her. That is not true. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I pay shitload for this money, uh, for this figure. I ain't going to tell you it's great when it's not. But one thing that is not true about it is that it doesn't look anything like Gal Gadot. It does. It's just something, I can't explain what it is. Um, I don't know. I don't know why certain situations it doesn't really look like her, but it's it is there. It is in the sculpt. Look at it. I mean there she is. I think maybe is it those teeth? See it was kinda of hidden when I was uh, when I moved the light around, but let me do this, let me move the light around. Let the shadows fall in different places and you can always like pause it and take stills and uh, debate and uh, do whatever it is you gonna do. But yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's a good likeness, but certain times you lose it and you have to try and look for it again. Very strange. And you shouldn't have to do that at the end of the day. Not with something that's expensive, but just worth mentioning. So I'm just trying this gently, just uh, giving that a little 
twist. See if I can. Most of the hair is over her shoulder. I just wanted one bit to kind of fall like that. And look at that annoying little hair there that's going right up in her face. I'm going to have to mess with that now and try and get rid of it. Usually I just get frustrated and pull that one hair out. Um, but yeah, that's with uh, one sort of. Not too big. That's the problem. You don't want to go too crazy. If you're going to be bringing a bit of hair around the front, just to mix it up a little bit and do this again. Let's see if that works. Calms it down a little bit. Not really, it just kind of does what it wants to do, but it creates a little bit of a separation, but yeah, it's just not the best hair in the world for working with. It's a bit frustrating and you'll probably end up pulling your own hair out. Um, but there you go. That's about as much as I can be bothered to do with the hair now, guys. Now I did actually um, run a comb through a hair just to see how that would work out. So I did uh, comb it all the way through and just, there wasn't really any knots or uh, much product or whatever the hell would be in there. Um, nothing really stopping me from getting that comb through there with ease. So um, it just allowed me to maneuver things a little bit better. I didn't trim the ends yet or anything. I still may not do that, but I did give it a little comb just to see if it would have any effect. You can um, do all kinds of different sort of variations. I like to put just a little bit at the front and keep the rest at the back. You've got to try and stop it from poofing out so much. It's hard to do one-handed, but yeah, you can work with it. She does look good there. All right, now I've moved her downstairs into the uh, setup I have with the interrogation room from the Dark Knight, and it's got that really nice uh, lamp here that I use. Really nice light, great for showing the detail, and I've just tied her hair back, with like a little mini hair clip thing there. So let's just move in. A good look at the detail on the skin. It's really impressive. And uh, the skin on here now, we can really get a look at these kind of weird, scratchy kind of marks. Now you won't really see those in regular circumstances. You can see the seam that goes from her neck all the way down her arm as well. You get a good look at that in this, uh, in this lighting. Let me just zoom in. So yeah, you see those scratches? I didn't actually do those, that wasn't me. They were there when I took her out of the box. And uh, that little sort of transition on her neck there. Um, right there, where the kind of shiny bit stops, but mind you, it's just it's more like a color change. That might just be the angle, but it does look like there's a bit of a transition screw up there. And uh, but bear in mind, I mean, this lighting I'm using right now is pretty intense. Let's get a look at the detail on her. Uh, what would you call that on her forehead? I can't remember uh, the name of it right now. It's escaping me. Now I'm seeing a bit of Natalie Portman, you know, seeing a few different faces within this one face. All right, I'll fix the hair and we'll put that down and we'll get a good look at that too. Uh, again, same as Harley Quinn, she's not actually sitting in this chair, she's doing that. This one bloody hair, just get out of it. Gotcha. Pissing me off, man, just kept disagreeing with me. All the other hairs cooperating. That one hair, that one rogue hair, that one renegade just wouldn't cooperate, so I had to pull it out. Looking good, looking good. I'm liking that. Looks like Gal Gadot to me. See there, it looks like her. That's pretty much undeniable from that angle. Love the way the uh, light is reflecting in her eyes there. Always brings so much more life. The teeth even look okay in this angle. With this lighting, that's very nice. I might have to go ahead and pause this and take some photographs. with it trying to 
to get that hair to just come around their face a little bit there, but it's a little bit, just, it's a bit pubaic. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little bit nether agency. A little bit, a little bit like the, the shrub from the south. And that, it's weird, as much as I spent on this little piece of uh, mischief, I'm, I'm still not regretting it. I, I still really am glad to have this. And it is a fantastic looking piece. It's just, um, you know, first time out of the park with this kind of thing for Hot Toys. So we knew something was going to be up. But, you know, I was still pretty happy to have it. No regrets. Just needs a little bit of work. I'll see what I can come up with as far as the hair goes. Yes. Well, nice detail on the eyebrows as usual. And they've been doing eyelashes really well recently. Great work on the lips. Work on the teeth is good. I just wish you couldn't really see them. The look on her face, when you think about it, what were they really thinking with that? You need to base, if you're doing a Wonder Woman figure and it's the first one and it's based on Batman vs Superman appearance, then what's the most iconic moment when she leaps down and saves Batman and defends herself with the crossed arms in front of Doomsday and when she lowers her sort of arms, you see the sort of furrowed brow, the look of uh, a warrior. And um, sometimes Hot Toys have the balls to do an expression that's really extreme, like Harley Quinn, uh, which basically they copied that exactly off a, a famous picture of Margot Robbie in the promotional work. I mean, they, they nailed it. It's exactly the same as a famous picture of her. Uh, but they, they had the balls to do that. But with this one, they've gone for that kind of let's play it safe and go for that kind of not dead look. It's not as bad as some of the uh, Black Widows, like the Winter Soldier that I had, Black Widow. That was a lovely looking figure, but it did have a very kind of lifeless, just staring forward. Not much you could really do with it. And there's a bit more life. And the fact that the eyes are being lit up with this nice light right now is adding to that. But um, it's just a bit, not very warrior. You know, she turned up, she saved both their asses. And... Uh, you know, it was one of the highlights of the film, but it's just not really expressed in this portrait. It just needs a little bit more. I mean, the Themyscira training version we're getting soon with the sculpted tied back hair, that has a more focused warrior-like look on the face. So that's cool. I'm just saying it would have been nice if this version, based on the fact that she, you know, for what she is in the film, for she's very warrior-like and does a lot of uh, badass stuff. And um, the only time she doesn't look badass in the film is at the end when she's, you know, all sad because Superman you know, sacrificed himself and stuff. Spoiler alert, blah, blah. But yeah, anyway, there you go. That's how it looks. Get amongst it. Get right up in there. Let's get right up in that grill. Just want to get a look at the armor under this particular light because it's really nice at showing up the detail. He did a fantastic job with this again. I mean, I love the paint app. You can see there um, where it's really been applied with a brush and they've kind of got different shades of uh, paint going on there. You've got the red and you've got some kind of, you know, not white, but something else. Obviously the black in the crevices, but yeah, they did, well, they did well on that. Looks good. I like the paint work on some of her other little bits and pieces. Is that going to focus for us? Yes. And yeah, the paint application to the end of her skirt there, the bit of gold. I mean, I guess it's meant to look a tiny bit worn. And uh, let's have a look at the, uh, there's one of her hairs there on the shield. <laughs> and it's gone. But yeah, nice work on this too. That's all kind of plastic. Yeah, nice detail. Alright, nice detail on her little arm doohickey. Let me just turn it around because that doesn't want to move. It's kind of clinging to a kind of silicone-y kind of skin, whatever the hell they've used. But yeah, nice work on the strap as well. That's really well done. Let's see all the sort of details in her skin as well. You see that little hair there. Uh, where is it? Yep, that little hair. If you were to go in and try and rub that away, you could end up damaging this thing, so be careful with stuff like that. Okay guys, I'm going to wrap up the review now and just give you my final thoughts. And it's very tricky because it comes down to the fact of can I recommend this figure to all of you? And the honest answer in my heart is no. Um, 
I would say if you're a huge fan of the film and you love Wonder Woman and you really in your heart really want to get this even though you know it does seem to have a few issues then I'd stay I'd say still go for it and still get it if you can get it for a fair price um, but just be aware I mean you can do all the poses that you've seen in those Hong Kong blogger pictures when the figure first came out in Hong Kong all those images came out of her doing all the poses that we thought she wouldn't be able to do she can do them but if you do that you're going to damage the body and it's going to look really bad and you're going to feel really terrible because it is an expensive piece so that's why I can't really you know handle my heart sort of say yeah get it guys because it has got problems it's new territory for hot toys they need to work on this the body you know is very sensitive shall we say and um, most people are going to have to just basically resort to a pose like this and there's nothing wrong with that it looks fantastic and that's why I would say if you are a big fan still go for it but just know going in it's um, it's got its little problems and you can avoid a lot of those problems uh, right out of the gate by being careful and not you know leaving her in any kind of extreme poses and if you just want to stand in there with Superman and Batman like I got her right now then go for it but as a whole as a total recommendation it's just it's too nerve-wracking a figure for me I'm glad I have her in the collection and I got no regrets but when it comes to like I say honestly recommending it to everyone as long as you know what you're going in for then yes but for the general public especially like say if someone was getting this as their first Hot Toys figure hell no because that would just be you know if they were going to try messing around with it something would go wrong eventually I think but you know as far as the likeness to Gal Gadot it's fine for a first attempt it's pretty damn decent and uh, I just watched I Am Toys review on this figure just now uh, it was a good like 40 minutes long so I got to take a nice 40 minute break um, but yeah he did a great job and uh, he said the head sculpt or the likeness was about 80 to 90 percent there um, I'd agree with that it's just uh, you know like I said before certain situations kind of tend to mess with the likeness a little bit but for me personally I'm glad I have it it's a very impressive looking piece I love the body the definition on the muscles especially around the neck and collarbone area really well done um, not too thrilled about the right out of the box having sort of marks on the skin there see that kind of scratch there right there where my fingernail is weird little scratch out of nowhere that just happened or was there when it came out of the box originally who cares anyway stress 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 shouldn't be that way when it comes to one six scale figures but I know it's you know it's it's a learning sort of path for hot toys they need to maybe bash out a few more Wonder Woman figures and eventually they'll hit that perfect stride and uh, I know they haven't done anything malicious here like do anything on purpose to try and upset collectors they have tried their best and uh, it is an impressive looking piece as one six scale figures go from a visual point of view it's stunning but um, you know if you're trying to make up your mind right now like I said between two female figures that have come out recently maybe you're trying to decide whether you should go for Wonder Woman or Harley Quinn like I said I'd definitely say Harley Quinn is the one to go for out of those two but I hope you've enjoyed this review I hope I've uh, tried to cover everything I did get some messages from people when I asked uh, if there's anything in particular you wanted to know I hope I've covered all of that as far as the fire scene body swap situation I tried it with Vampirella like you saw it didn't really work there's other fire scene bodies out there maybe it will but yeah it's a very visually impressive one six scale figure hopefully you know a solo movie version will correct any problems this has and i will probably be grabbing the Themyscira version with the hair tied back the sculpted hair I'd be very curious to see what they do with that body is it going to be the same as this i hope not they definitely need to pay attention Sometimes they do, like when uh, Deadpool came out and he had the wrist situation. I got that review out nice and fast and made sure to make a point of letting everyone know about the wrist pegs. And then batch two, uh, or was it batch three, was fixed. But so if we get on these reviews quickly and try and find out any problems, make people aware of them, and then in the future we can avoid them. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, share it with your friends, check me out on Instagram and Facebook, Dean Knight333. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.